Dia Hamami. He is a political science scholar at the Maxwell School, Syracuse University. He joins us live now from New York. Sir, it's uh, really good to speak to you today. Now, Kais Sayed has decreed the new parliament as part of a reconfigured presidential system that he introduced back in 2021. How much more control is he going to have over the country now? So the new parliament is composed of a large group of individuals who don't know each other. And they don't really have that much power over the executive. So as you said, it's a super presidential regime um, where the parliament will be just an institution that will have a very formalistic role. It will just approve whatever the executive wants to pass. Right, and the economy is probably the number one thing that Tunisians are complaining about. How bad is the economic situation in Tunisia? And is Syed talking about this issue at all? The economic situation is reaching an unprecedentedly critical situation. Yesterday, um, the rating agency Moody's downgraded Tunisia again, and it's wouldn't be surprising if they do that in the future simply because the government don't seem to be able to properly address the issues that uh, Tunisians and um, lenders and creditors of Tunisia are um, are concerned about. So um, we may see the situation going down a, a spiral that may not end in the near future. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, the scariest part of, the, of Tunisia's generalized crisis. So just give us some insight into how we got to this stage of a crippling economy, high unemployment rates. There's clearly a political, un uh, a political crisis unfolding. And give us some insight into the decisions that Kais Syed has made in enforcing somewhat a one-man rule in the country? So in um, summer 2021, uh, in the middle of um, COVID crisis, uh, President Qais Saeed decided unilaterally to deploy the military and block access to the parliament. And later on, he dissolved the parliament, suspended the constitution, and he thought that he can bring an alternative. And at that time, a large part of the population was anxious because of the general situation, the COVID crisis, so they supported him in the very beginning. Um, but he failed uh, for a very simple reason. Um, he tend to attribute all the problems to um, conspiracy of the opposition and um, um, foreign powers. Mm -hmm. um, he've been um, implementing some populist uh, sometimes even irrational policies that uh, disrupted the supply chain and that had an effect on inflation, among right. others. Right. Um, so, yes, he's not the kind of person who is able to um, properly uh, think of economic policies and implement right. them um, in collaboration with the other stakeholders. So his policies have led to the lack of political freedom, high unemployment, inflation, corruption. These were all reasons behind the revolution back in 2011. Could we see similar scenes happen in Tunisia if Kais Syed continues to crack down on the country's political system? We may see uh, social unrest. And in fact, Moody's reports mentioned that yesterday. In, uh, yesterday. Um, but a scenario that would be identical to the revolution is, I would say, very unlikely because of the reforms and the new dynamics um, within the, the security apparatus that um, is, I would say, very different from what happened during the last years of Ben Ali. So I, I am, um, I don't think that Saeed uh, would flee the country in this way Ben Ali uh, did in mm -hmm. 2011. However, it's very likely that his popularity will keep going down even further than what it is right now. And right. he won't be able to get a sufficient amount of uh, votes in maybe the next elections in 2024. All right, Mohammed Diahamami, thank you so much for joining us here on TR2 World and sharing that analysis with us.